Hello folks and welcome back to my channel. As y'all well know, we've spent a lot of time talking about ear stretching and safe stretching methods on my page. Today, I want to deep dive into another method of jump starting your stretching process, large gauge initial lobe piercings. Now exactly as the name implies, large gauge initial lobe piercings are when we initially pierce an earlobe at a larger gauge. Now there's a lot of benefits to doing this, um, but there are some cons, so we're going to talk about both of those, and I'm also going to show you some clips of me doing some large gauge lobe piercings, as well as dispel some myths about piercing needles. So let's get right into it. Now when it comes to deciding to stretch your earlobes, there's a lot of different things to weigh out. A lot of folks will end up starting with natural stretching, so just stretching with single flare glass plugs, waiting over time, and just kind of getting their ears to size up. However, some people either know for a fact they want to stretch and they don't have any earlobe piercings at all, so it seems a little silly to get pierced at like the smallest size if you're just going to let it heal and immediately stretch it larger. And some people have existing earlobe piercings that were pierced with piercing guns or pierced when they were younger and they're not super well placed or they have a lot of scar tissue built up and they're going to really, really struggle with some of those smaller sizes with stretching. This is especially true of folks who got their ears pierced with piercing guns and folks whose initial lobe piercings from when they were little are just really, really poorly placed. Um, so it's a better option for them to get new piercings done that are fresh, healthy tissue or to get large gauge piercings done and kind of correct poor lobe placement. So in these situations, starting off with a larger initial piercing is a really great option because it's going to jumpstart the stretching process for folks who know that they want to stretch. If let's say someone had some existing piercing gum piercings that were just had a lot of scarring, they weren't going to stretch, we just kind of give you a fresh start with a larger new piercing and nice healthy tissue that stretches more easily. And if you've got bad placement, we can use a large gauge initial piercing to kind of correct that placement. Here are some examples of what some large gauge initial lobe piercings look like when they're first done. And there's a whole variety when it comes to large gauge initial lobes. I would say anything from like a 10 gauge all the way up to a 2 gauge all fall under the umbrella of a larger gauge initial lobe piercing. So it's a pretty broad spectrum. It doesn't just mean one singular size. It can mean anything in this size range depending on what's right for you. Now we talked about the pros, jump starting your stretching process, helping you out if you've got existing piercings that aren't great for stretching, but there are some cons to large gauge initial lobe piercings. The biggest being that any stretching or any large gauge initial piercing work when it comes to the lobes should be considered permanent. There's this concept online that there's a size of no return that you can stretch to and then your ears will still shrink back. A lot of people say it's zero gauge. Um, that is a lie. It's enough of a lie that I'm like tempted to do a whole video about it, um, but it's not true. I have seen people only stretch their ears or only pierce their ears to an 8 or a 6 gauge and take jewelry out and they never close up. I've seen people who stretch their ears all the way up to half inch and 5 eighths and it's shrunken back down to a normal earring size. Um, it's totally variable and a lot of it depends on your body, your skin health, your skin elasticity, how you stretched, how healthy your lobe tissue is. There's a ton of different factors, but any and all stretching should be considered permanent. So if you're planning on getting pierced at a larger size initially, really make sure you're committed to being at that size because there is literally no guarantee that it's going to shrink back down. Now the other con to large gauge initial lobe piercings is that they're a little bit more healing than regular lobe piercings. They're not actually a ton more healing, uh, but they do take longer to heal. It is a little bit more involved in the healing process. Large gauge lobe piercings produce a lot more secretion. There's a lot more crust and debris to clean away. They can be more prone to dealing with wetness irritations, just given the nature of their size. And they're also known for being super, super, super itchy during the healing process, uh, which is not great. Like. They're, they're so itchy. They're so itchy while they're healing. Um, so there is a lot more work that goes into healing these piercings and healing them well. That being said, for most folks who are really interested in stretching, and especially for those who have piercing gun piercings that are really scarred up, that just like will not budge past like a 16 or a 14 or a 12 gauge, and they are just super struggling to get their ears to stretch. Um, large gauge initial piercings are such an amazing option to jumpstart that stretching process and get us nice healthy tissue. And I think they're worth the little bit of extra healing and extra care that they entail. 
Now when it comes to actually getting large gauge low piercings, a lot of people like the concept of them in theory, but they're like, what is this like in practice? How do you even do this? How do you even pierce someone that big? Um, and the answer is actually very simple. It is just a bigger piercing needle. So uh, piercing needles come in all shapes and all sizes. Uh, I'm gonna put a content warning for graphic imagery um, and me doing large gauge low piercings coming up in this video. Uh, so if you don't wanna see that, now is your time to stop watching. Um, but piercing needles come in all shapes and sizes. Here's a photograph of a play piercing project that I did earlier last year, and it features needles all the way up from an 18 gauge all the way at the top, all the way down to a four gauge down at the bottom. These are all piercing needles, and as we can see, they are in a variety of sizes. So if we want to do a larger piercing for your lobe, we can simply use a larger needle. Now, the follow-up question from a lot of folks is, oh my god, doesn't that just like punch a big hole out of your ear? Wouldn't you lose all of that skin for stretching with? Um, and the answer is no. So let's take a look at me actually doing some large gauge lobes so you can see how the process is done. All right, so you're just going to feel me doing some more pressing and checking, okay? This is a NAMI piercing, NAMI poking, just me feeling for how things move. I will tell you when it's time for that nice deep breath in. That way there's no surprises. Okay. Right, nice big deep breath. And exhale. You did great. Piercing is done. Just gonna pop your jewelry in. You did awesome. You're gonna feel a little bit of friction here while I go ahead and guide your jewelry in. And then once your jewelry is in, all that friction and pressure will be over. Breathe here through that feeling on the jewelry. And there we go. Jewelry is in. You did it. Yay! Hopefully not as bad as you were imagining. Definitely spicy. No, it is spicy. <laughs> it's spicy. It's hot. <laughs> but it's I, I not that bad. A hot pepper on my ear. Yes. <laughs> All right. So this side is totally done. How you feeling? Ready to get started for side number two? Yep. Awesome. All right, so that was me doing one side of a large gauge low piercing set, and you can see, honestly, pretty easy. It goes just as smooth as any regular ear low piercing does. Um, I describe the sensation of large gauge low piercings as very spicy. It feels very hot. Um, I've done a lot of sets of these, and the overall response from my clients is that it definitely wasn't painless, but it really wasn't that bad. I had a, uh, it's been compared quite often to like rubbing a hot pepper on your ear or that feeling of a hot pepper in your mouth but in your ear so it's not pleasant um, but it's certainly not the end of the world and for how much time and money and energy and effort you're saving on stretching um, if this is the right call for you totally worth it in my book um, but as a follow-up at the end of that video you saw me take a look down the needle that I just used to pierce um, no skin no tissue uh, let's take another closer slower look at that but safe properly done piercings with proper high quality piercing needles do not remove tissue. They are designed to cut a crescent shaped wound in the body and then stretch and displace that tissue to create the piercing channel. And they do that even at larger sizes. Now let's take a quick peek at me doing the other ear so that way we can see the whole process. Let me do it all that pressing and checking again first, okay? This is not me piercing or poking. This is still all just me feeling for how things move. No surprises here. All right, big deep breath. And exhale. You did great. Piercing is done. Just popping that jewelry in, okay? You're gonna feel that pressure on the jewelry again on this side. So just go ahead and breathe here through that pressure on the jewelry. And there we go. Just pop it all the back in. You did it! <laughs> now you get to be super itchy for the next three months. And there you have it! Some large TH low piercings. And as you saw, that was really like not terrible for that client to get done. And it turned out super great. 
Now, following up on that, do the needles remove tissue thing, something to talk about when it comes to large gauge initial work is the difference between piercing and punching. So piercing describes any procedure that's done with a piercing needle, and punching describes any procedure that's done with a dermal punch or a biopsy punch. This is actually a round needle, kind of looks like a little hole punch, and this does remove tissue. It's what's used to do medical biopsies, and piercers use it for some piercing procedures in states where it's legal. It's illegal in a lot of places for piercers to use dermal punches and biopsy punches um, so you don't see them that often. Um, but a punch is going to remove tissue and we do not want to do that when we are doing large gauge low piercings. The reason being any of that tissue that's removed is tissue that could later be used for stretching. So when we're talking about stretching our ears, especially stretching our ears large, all of that tissue matters because that's what's eventually going to become all of this tissue right here around your stretched ear. And if we punch that tissue out, we're literally removing so much skin and tissue that is so beneficial to our stretching process. So that's why we want to pierce rather than punch. And I'll have a lot of people who will be like, oh, Lynn, I've got like a bunch of scarring in my lobe. Like, I don't know, I think I should punch. Um, and I'm going to tell you, only a handful of times over my 11 years of piercing have I seen a lobe scarred up enough that I thought a punch was the right call. 90% of the time someone's like, I've got this scarring, I don't know what to do and I feel it and I'm like, we can just pierce that, that's going to be fine. But you lose a ton of important usable tissue if you punch. So if you're interested in getting large gauge low piercings done and you're talking to a piercer about it and they mention that they're thinking about using a punch on you or they pull out a tool that has like a long green handle to do these piercings with, that is a sign to step back and ask questions. And in any situation where a piercer is making the call to use a punch over a needle on large gauge lobes, they should be having a very thorough consultation with you about why they feel that's the best choice in your situation. They should be explaining with you the risks of the tissue that they're going to be removing, how that could affect your future stretching process, and they should be using kind of the smallest punch they can to remove the least amount of tissue. Unfortunately, I see a lot of clients who don't know better, who see large gauge low piercings online in portfolios like mine and just go to wherever their local studio is not really knowing any better and they get punched and then they can't reach their goal size because they don't have enough tissue left on their lobe because that's not how that should have been done. So definitely please be really careful with that. Not that there's never situations where I think punching can be appropriate. Every now and again I see someone where it is. It's just exceedingly, exceedingly rare for that to be the call. It is almost always going to be safer to pierce and keep that tissue for future stretching, especially if your goal is to go large, like anything over half inch, five eighths, you are going to need that skin. Now, when it comes to aftercare and caring for large gauge initial lobes, it's really similar to regular earlobe piercings. You're cleaning them with saline, you're leaving them alone, you're letting them heal. Depending on the climate you live in and the anatomy you're working with, your piercer may recommend some extra drying in your routine. Large gauge lobe piercings are known for sometimes developing wetness irritation. So again, depending on like the client and the climate where we're located, um, sometimes I include extra drying in my aftercare with these to prevent that type of irritation. Um, and some clients, depending on the line of work they do or their body or or different medical conditions may need to do a little bit of extra cleaning during the healing process but for the most part it's going to be the same as healing a regular earlobe piercing it's just a bigger piercing there's more crust there's more cleaning to do um, and when it comes to large gauge lobe piercings the best jewelry to pierce them with is going to be single flare glass Single flare glass is hypoallergenic, it's body safe, it's easy to use for the healing process. I personally really love doing these with glass eyelets that are clear because then you can actually monitor the healing process, which I think is so cool. You can watch the new skin grow on the inside of the piercing through the clear eyelet, um, and I just think that's like literally so rad. Um, but these should never be done with double flare plugs initially. If someone is trying to do a large gauge lobe piercing on you and put in double flare plugs uh, or screw back plugs, please please run far away. That is going to have a very bad ending for you and I would not suggest it. Uh, I also don't suggest stone for initial large gauge low piercings. Stone can be porous, it can collect and trap bacteria. There's so much that goes into actually getting well-made stone plugs that I just don't think it's worth the risk. Uh, it's also would be really expensive to get a really, really quality pair of stone plugs. Glass is gonna be way more affordable. Uh, same when it comes to metal eyelets um, and metal tunnels. I'll see people use these occasionally as well. If they're from a really 
really high quality reputable brand like Anatta Metal or Industrial Strength, they can be safe to heal with, um, but the sharp rear edge on like a single flare pair of metal eyelets or tunnels can really cause damage if it comes in and out of the piercing. Uh, and with large age low piercings, like I mentioned, it's single flare stuff. So you're going to be wearing O-rings. You're probably going to lose some O-rings during the course of this healing. That is the nature of O-rings. Um, and your plug may end up accidentally popping out. If it does, it's not the end of the world, but if people are pierced with single flare metal eyelets, I definitely see them cause damage reinserting them. So again, I really like single flare glass plugs or glass eyelets for this. The back is rounded and more smooth. So God forbid something does fall out during the healing process, which definitely does happen with these. It is not nearly as big of a deal and it is way easier for the client to get the jewelry back in themselves safely at home. Um, so when I'm doing these, I'm really looking at all of these factors, not just what's gonna look cool in the initial piercing, uh, or give the look at once. I'm also trying to think about what the healing process is going to be like, how long it's going to take, and what hiccups might occur. Large gauge load piercings take about three to five months to fully heal. 90% of the time I'm doing these, I'm giving clients the full five months for healing just because it is a bigger wound. It does take a little bit longer to heal, and there are usually some hiccups on the process like losing O-rings, plugs falling out, or dealing with wetness irritation. So I like to err on the side of caution. The other thing is a lot of folks are going to want to start stretching as soon as these are fully healed and you definitely want these to be 100% healed and healthy before you consider your first stretch. A lot of times first stretch is not happening until about 6 to 10 months after we've done the initial piercings. So you are going to be waiting a while before you start your stretching journey. However, if you look at it in terms of how many sizes you got to like skip forward and go to with your large gauge lobe, uh, it balances out and you're still moving faster than you would have been with natural stretching. So you do want to wait a little bit past that healing phase. Every now and again, I encounter someone who just has like the world's most phenomenal immune system and like amazingly elastic skin. Um, funnily enough, when I've done large gauge work on people with EDS, this tends to be the case, whose ears are ready to stretch like the moment that piercing is healed, like they come in at five months and they're like, Lynn, my plugs are literally falling out of my ears um, and it's amazing. But that is the minority. Most folks, their piercing is fully healed, yes, at that five month mark, but it's not starting to loosen up and be ready to start the stretching process until a couple months after it's fully healed. The body's been too busy healing and building new skin on the inside of that big piercing for the last five months to worry about getting things loose and ready to stretch. That happens afterwards. So average time frame if you're getting something like this done, three to five months for it to fully heal, and like another three to five months before you start stretching. After that, stretching goes as normal. One millimeter every couple of months, half sizes if it ever gets stubborn, but I do find that those who get large gauge initial lobe piercings done have a significantly easier time stretching than those who stretched from like their first piercing gun piercings, um, just because they've got that nice fresh start, they've got that nice healthy tissue. And also they're usually uh, starting off just with like a little bit of a higher bar of education for stretching. Um, a lot of folks who stretch from standard lobe piercings and piercing and piercings are starting off with like not the best quality jewelry, tapers, things like that. So that all contributes as well. But if you know you want to stretch your ears, like you are 100% decided that stretching is for you um, and you don't have any piercings right now or you have piercings that you know are going to be tricky to stretch or they're poorly placed or you've got some scar tissue, I would really consider looking into large gauge lobe piercings and seeing if it's something that's viable for your anatomy. Obviously every ear is different, every anatomy is different. Some ears we really shouldn't pierce large at all and many ears we can't go too too big with initial piercing. It all depends on how much lobe you've got to work with and what we're dealing with. But large gauge lobe piercings can really be a phenomenal way for folks to kind of jumpstart that stretching process, get ahead of the curve, and just kind of get their ears to a really good place moving forward that will help them stretch a lot easier and not deal with a lot of the problems that I see folks deal with all the time when they're trying to stretch from existing stuff. And of course, I can't make this video without saying at least once, please do your research if you are considering getting large gauge low piercings done. You want to find a piercer who's got a lot of large gauge work in their portfolio, who has healed and fresh examples. It's really easy to have a lot of fresh pictures of large gauge lobe piercings. I want to see someone who's got a bunch of healed large gauge lobes in their portfolio and lobes that clients have healed and stretched. Like, cool, you pierced it at a four gauge. What does it look like now? Was a client able to get to their goal size? Did they make it to five eighths inch, inch and a half? Were these piercings placed thoughtfully for future stretching? They're not too close to the upper cartilage where they're going to rub. They're not too close to the bottom of the ear where you could end up with thin spots. 
Large gauge lobe piercings are a more advanced procedure and if they're done wrong, they can cause serious side effects. They can limit your stretching process and even cause you to end up losing stretched ears if they're done too low or too high where they're not viable. So you definitely need someone who's very experienced in large gauge piercing work who's gonna do these for you correctly. So that is a brief overview of large gauge lobe piercings. If you are considering stretching your ears or have some stubborn piercings, I hope this option is something that may work out for you. And I also hope this debunks some of the myth about piercing needles or moving tissue. If you have any questions or anything like that, please leave them in the comments down below. And as per usual, your support uh, and your encouragement with this means the world to me. If you like this video and you like the content I put out, please hit like and subscribe. And I cannot wait to sit down and hang out with y'all again soon. Bye.